Sim-swapping criminals were charged, over 100 sites were found running malicious code, and an unhackable USB drive gets hacked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for May 14, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out, and this one goes out to Nicola, Gabe, Boris, Matt, Gary, Kat, Katalvar, Music, Corey, and Magnus, who joined the Patreon team this week. I would also like to say thank you to everyone who contributes to my content on alternative platforms, which you can find over at snubsy.com support, where you can go to support the show directly, and I'll put that link down in the show notes as usual. And of course, if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now it's time for some news. First off, we have sim swapping. Sim swapping has been on the rise for the past few years, and notably so. It is a form of social engineering where an attacker will social engineer an employee of a mobile carrier like Verizon or AT&T and trick them into swapping the phone number tied to a user sim to a new SIM card owned by the attacker. Then this allows them to receive password reset codes, 2FA codes sent via text, and a lot more. A group of scammers called The Community has used this tactic to steal more than 2.4 million USD by stealing cryptocurrency and by holding user accounts ransom. On Friday, eight Americans and one Irish man were charged with wire fraud for this ongoing scheme. According to Krebs on Security, six were charged in Michigan as a part of the community, some of which who have been known by name due to previous articles and arrests. Krebs had reported on Ricky Hanschumacher, hopefully I said that name right, one of the defendants last year due to grand theft and money laundering. Others were known hackers such as Ryan Stevenson, who goes by the name Phobia online, and Colton Juristic, aka Forza the God, both of which who were using tactics to practice identity theft. The Eastern District of Michigan lists the six men, all within their 20s, with one as young as 19, all charged with an indictment for wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and aggravated identity theft. A criminal complaint for wire fraud was also made against another three men in relation to the conspiracy. In total, the community executed seven attacks against users to steal cryptocurrency, totaling that $2.4 million. Three of the defendants, White, Jack, and Joseph, who were charged in the criminal complaint, were actually employees of mobile carriers. They had helped the rest of the group steal identities in exchange for bribes. Homeland Security investigations led the investigation into the thefts. The defendants faced 20 years in prison each and two years for aggravated identity theft in support of wire fraud. This is not the first criminal case that we have seen regarding SIM swapping, with one happening just last month, and it probably won't be the last. More than 100 e-commerce sites have been hosting malicious card skimming JavaScript that can steal credit card details whenever a user enters their card info upon checkout, according to a report by cybersecurity company NetLab360. NetLab360 found 105 websites hosting the script, which can extract the name, credit card number, expiration date, and CVV of a payment card whenever they enter them onto the site. All sites listed are smaller niche market sites that sell outdoor equipment, auto parts, clothing, sporting equipment, food, baby merch, and a lot more, many of which are based in the United States. The JavaScript is hosted on magentoanalytics.com, which returns a 403 error if you try to visit that site. But URLs under that domain do host malicious code and can be used to infect other e-commerce sites. The Hacker News states that it is not known how these sites were infected in the first place or if there were any vulnerabilities exploited in these attacks. All sites are running Magento e-commerce CMS software, but that specific piece of information has not been tied to the malicious Magento Analytics com scripts of the same name, which likely use that name to disguise itself from users. According to the head of threat intelligence at Malwarebytes, Jerome Seguera, this is not new. Seguera states to Ars Technica, quote, we block an average of 100 connections to this domain daily from Malwarebytes users that visit an online store that has been hacked. A surge of infections of this kind started last year, with popular sites like British Airways, Newegg, and more being infected for months and months at a time. 
Unfortunately, it is hard to detect card skimming JavaScript for both the website administrator as well as the user. Web admins should apply updates and patches to their site, limit privileges, and harden the security of their servers. Now, of course, if you are worried about card skimming online, consider only using credit cards, which offer better protections than debit cards, or switching to temporary cards that use a fixed line of credit. Check your statements every month for fraudulent charges as well, because chargebacks can only be made for a set time from your bank. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you are interested in getting access to a slew of extras and perks, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button down below to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show each and every week, which is a fully crowdfunded show. That is our funding platform. Also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy perk level patrons for sending in their fair baby photos. I love them so keep them coming. This week's Patreon top story is all about an unhackable USB device. The device is called the iDisc, which is a USB stick that uses biometrics, in this case it's iris recognition, to unlock the drive's contents. When it was on Kickstarter, where it received enough funding to hit production, it was called the iDisc, the unhackable USB flash drive, which uses AES 256-bit encryption of the iris pattern. But we know that with anything claiming to be unhackable, it's usually taken as a challenge. And that challenge was accepted by David Lodge of Pentest Partners, who successfully paired his iris and started testing it. Photographs or similar eyes did not trick the device. Taking it apart would have made anyone notice that it was tampered with due to its form factor. Well, according to Pentest Partners and Lodge, their release on the device, they found that it connected as three different devices to a Windows VM, a USB camera, a read-only flash drive, and a removable media volume. Lodge fired up Wireshark to analyze the software of the device after noticing the retinal scanner passes data to the internal chip, which allowed it to be unlocked. In Wireshark, he used USB PCAP option to sniff packets in real time from the USB. He noticed that it uses command descriptor blocks, or CDBs for short, to send the commands, and inside those CDBs, he saw a string of characters that he recognized as his password, along with a 16-byte hash that was likely to be the iris hash. Now, while the iris data was hashed, the password string was in completely clear text. The software on iDisk collects the password, then validates the user entered password before it sends the unlock password. So even if you entered the wrong password, the correct one will show in the packet capture. Huh. From here, an attacker could dump the password with an automated script. IDIS did respond to Lodge's early reporting of this problem, but soon after that quit all communications with the researcher. Pentest partners waited 30 days to publicly release information on the device and their findings. Lodge recommends that anyone using this device to store sensitive data to encrypt the data before storing it on the actual iDisk. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe down below to our channel. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.